How are you feeling week. at the moment though? Never Soft, definitely doing its thing on the yeah. charts. And you know what I mean? Everyone's feeling that club land, radio land. Did you expect it to impact anything like that? No. Um, on one hand, yeah, in a sense that when I heard that beat, I was like, whoa, you know, I listened to it so many times just on its own, you know, as, as a song, just as a beat on its own. So I knew that if it affected me like that, you know, it's going to affect other people like that. But in terms of, you know, the tune as a whole and it going out and whatnot and the, the, the response, it's definitely exceeded, you know, wherever I imagined it might get to yeah it's crazy definitely in a different space in your career like um and definitely at a place where it feels like you've gone full cycle to the mm-hmm. beginning like back to your kind of dancehall kind of roots with the you know with the reggae tongue and that kind of style like how would you describe where you're at now the space that you're in i think to be honest i do feel like it's gone full circle in the sense that i feel how I felt at the very beginning of, of my career, where it was just totally fun. It was all about just energy and just like, I couldn't wait to get on stage and just go in and just like, that's that's like my vibe now. You know, everything else is kind of secondary to that. You know, where it ends up doing in the charts and, you know, I shouldn't really say that because from a business perspective, you know, but my heart is not, in business my heart is in the music and the vibe and the energy so yeah that's what it is for me definitely so all right when when you made boo do you remember writing the lyrics do you remember the inception of the track where you was when you wrote the track and how it was going to impact take us back to that time i remember i wrote boo uh on my Oh, and I think in my bedroom. I've got a feeling it was in my bedroom. Or I wrote most of it in my bedroom. And I remember at the time, um, Sticky had a studio uh, with Jason K at Jason K's house. And I wrote Boo to a totally different track that was more, it had a piano in it. I remember it was very, it was like much more melodic. And I went and I laid the lyrics and I remember Jason K and Sticky kind of looking at me like excited but I didn't like I was very self-conscious I was good at kind of acting like yeah I'm cool Mm. but inside I was really just like oh my gosh I hope they like it do they like it I don't know what their faces mean right now you know like really and I left and then when I came back he had made the like the new rhythm track for Boo that wasn't how it started and so for instance when you hear it like feel about yell bass and the dung 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 and he does that with the, the it, that it, it didn't start out like that like he had the the genius and the the ears to go and make the beat follow the lyrics and in terms of um how i laid the lyrics this is another thing is that sticky where his roots you know as a dj and he was going out with ill kids and playing a lot of bashment and whatnot with the melody like i really wanted to change up the melody in certain places there'll be times when i was like i don't know where to take this bit but i want to take it somewhere he's like try um you know like he would give help give me you know the little the little kind of hooky parts to it so um yeah that was really how that that one went down and then they kind of they they put it on test press first i remember being in Oh my gosh, honestly. And then it just went somewhere else. I was like, whoa, what's going on here? So hold on tight. Cause you can never run from what you see. Take my advice. The spirits don't fly in unless they're free. Not many might know, but like you have definitely left your twenties behind, right? <laughs> 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 only just only, only just, just. <laughs> how does it feel now how does that affect the mind state of where miss dynamite is now musically artistry wise honestly if we're talking like musically and art you know artist wise then no it's not even a bit i don't even think i reached my 20s in terms of you know musically when i get on the stage i feel like i'm 16 all over again and this energy just comes out of nowhere and it doesn't matter if I've had one hour sleep, two hours sleep. It don't matter if I never slept for three days. It don't, you know, once I hit the stage, that's it. It's just like the vibe and the energy of a, of a proper youngster, you know, just comes out of nowhere. Um, I think in terms of my mentality and my thinking, I'm very 
conscious of like what I'm putting out there, but I don't think that's very different to like the, to how it was, you know, then, like from the from the beginning for me. So yeah, I don't feel like there's like that much of a change. No The female scene at the moment in the UK is in probably the greatest state it's ever been. Mm -hmm. With a lot of MCs that are definitely doing some significant stuff. What's Miss mm -hmm. Dynamite's take on it? Definitely, I love it. I, I love to see so many UK female MCs just doing their thing, standing their ground. Very, very talented. You got Miss Brat doing her thing. No lay. I had the pleasure of working with um, Three Six Seven, uh, which is um, Amplified Dot Lioness and Lady Leisha. For those who don't know, they're sick. Honestly, just I just feel like. Who's the one that frightens you the most? Like, you really got to put your neck out here and say, like, who, who's the one that frightens, like, oh, you know she's what? going in with the bars or she can really take it to no, that next level? I don't want to sound like, I don't mean it in no cocky way, but no one has ever frightened me in any way. Just No be females have ever frightened me. Never, because, like. you know, like, I don't know, I've always been of this kind of, I've never compared myself to anyone else and I've never felt like I'm in competition with anyone else. Just because, I, I don't know, maybe I wasn't raised like that. You know, I remember my mum and my dad always saying to me, no one on earth can be better at being you then you can be better, you know, than being you. So that's it, you know, I'm just trying to do me. I'm not trying to look in left and trying to be better than my girl over here. Or, but... Who excites you? In saying that, now listen, I, I think Lioness, for me, just like, I don't know, there's something about her, her style and her confidence and her charisma that she kind of reminds me a little bit of Biggie like the way she flows and it, obviously she hasn't got the same flow as Biggie yeah it's just so effortless it's just like she eats it yeah and she rides on it in, in such a way that I don't know I just want to like you know but then in saying that you've got Lady Leisha the way she when she listen when she just said I'm just like what this little, she's so small and she's so cute and she's so sweet. And I mean that in the most, you know, nice way. But when she kind of goes in, you know, and then, yeah, then Amplified Dot, you got No Lay, you got Baby Blue. They've all, for me, they've all got something very special, you know, about them. And I think another thing that I feel very... Um, inspired by I would say is that they're all doing what they're doing and making their mark and getting where they're getting you know totally based on their talent I think that for a lot of um, female MCs in terms of like history um, and just female artists musicians in general you know sometimes we can uh, rely on the feminine side and rely on you know not on just not on our talent you know or we try to push other things you know to help us get forward and I just feel like they're all just like listen this is me bam like there's no playing and I, I like that I love it when you made this song never soft was it because you was trying to prove that you're one of the hardest <laughs> no not at all i think for me never soft is about there was a day when i thought i was the hardest there was a day when i had that kind of like eh, about me and i think i've grown up and you kind of realize that actually being the hardest is for me it's about just being able to be who you are, you know, and be comfortable within who you are. Because when you feel the need to be like, yeah, I'm this and I'm that, you're not really comfortable with who you are. Otherwise, you just chill, innit? You just, like, be cool. So for me, never soft is is about, never being never soft is, you know, being strong. But being strong, the ultimate strength is just being cool with who you are. And so, you're definitely yeah. softer than people might think because when <laughs> you get on the mic and you get on the stage, it is definitely the bad guy. <laughs> and this whole different persona comes out. Uh, but, you know, you are you seem like, you know, <laughs> the people that have sat down and spoke to Miss Dynamite, you can see that uh, there is a, a, a nice girl there. I'm oh, not saying he expected you. you to be horrible, uh, but maybe a bit more 
sharp. bit more coarse. Yeah. I leave that for the for, for stage and for the you know, I just this 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 is this is me being comfortable with and who I am. I don't feel the need to be like that all the time. Like that's just the stage persona like stuck in the energy so 